Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the building of the DIY Ardu Boy. Now, last week we covered up setting up the Arduino IDE, as well as how to download and install games on the Arduino, much like this Castlevania clone here. If you missed that, you can go ahead and click the link in the top right of your screen to watch part one first. This week we're going to be connecting your Arduino through a breadboard to screen controls and speaker so that we can have an actual functional system. So, let's get going. Well, let's start off by reviewing what's going to connect to what in this setup. Now, the Arduino's got several ground pins, and ground is actually going to go to every component on the system. So, ground will connect to ground on the screen, as well as ground on all of the controls. After the ground, we have the voltage, or VCC pin. Uh, voltage only has to go between the Arduino and the screen, so we'll be joining those. On the screen, we also have a D0, which connects to pin 15 on the Arduino. We have a D1 that connects to pin 16. We have an RES, which connects to 6. We have a DC, which connects to 4. And we have a CS that connects to 3. So those 7 pins are enough to get the image onto the screen. Then for the controls, pin 7 on the Arduino will connect to the A button, pin 8 will connect to the B button, and then analog 0 will connect to down, analog 1 will connect to left, analog 2 will connect to right, and analog 3 will connect to up. If you wish to use a speaker, you're going to go ahead and connect that to pin 5. If you want to get volume control, you're going to connect a potentiometer in between pin 5 and the speaker, and then adjusting the potentiometer will lower the volume up and down. And here we have a diagram of what this might all look like once it's hooked up. As you can see, the ground wire is common to the screen controls and speakers. Other than that, the pins here are a one-to-one -one relationship. In total, you're going to have 21 connections to make, 7 for the screen, and 2 for the speakers as well as each of the buttons. Now for this setup, you're going to need a breadboard as well as enough jumper cables to connect everything together. I opted to use two small breadboards. The bottom breadboard is going to house my controls and screen, while the upper breadboard will hold the Arduino. This should allow it to be somewhat playable once it's complete. You're also going to need a screen, as well as some tactile switches. These tactile switches have four tabs. The tabs are actually paired, and since I'm often forgetful as to which pairs are paired with which, I usually just attach my jumper cables to the opposite corners, because they're never joined. And that way the switch will always work. You can also optionally include a potentiometer that will allow you to control the volume of the audio. And finally, you're going to need the Arduino that we flashed last week with a game. We're going to have to start off by doing some basic soldering. The breadboard actually makes this a lot easier. Simply place the pins into the breadboard and then position your board over top of them. This will hold everything steady while we get our first couple of pins soldered. You're going to want to start off by soldering each of the corner pins. This is going to prevent the board from moving around, making it much easier to successfully solder all of the other pins. Remember to push the solder into the gap between the pin and the board to create a strong bond. Too little solder will make the join weak, and may cause frustrating intermittent problems later on down the line. With the corners soldered, simply repeat the soldering steps for each of the remaining pins. If you have a multimeter and you haven't done a lot of this soldering before, now would be a great time to break it out and test to make sure that there's no connectivity between pins. If you put in potentially too much solder and it joins two pins, it could really cause you some problems, so taking a few seconds to test it now may save you some frustration in the future. Now it's time to start placing our other components. So go ahead and position the screen where you'd like it on the breadboard, but make sure to leave enough space around it so you can place your buttons in a logical position. You shouldn't have to push too hard on any of these components to get them to sink into the holes on the breadboard. Inside the breadboard, the lettered sockets are connected to each other on the line numbers. For example, on line 1, sockets A through E are connected. The line down the middle of the board divides these connections, so that F through J are connected to each other, but not connected to A through E. This allows you to place the Arduino with the divider in the middle and not accidentally short-circuit its pins.
And now it's time to start making our connections. Using your jumper wires, insert into the holes on the same line numbers as the pins you need to access. Using the chart from the beginning of the video, you simply plug the jumper cable into the correct line on the Arduino, and then the proper component. For example, we can use jumper wires to connect ground and power, or GND and VCC, to the GND and VCC pins on the Arduino and the screen. Be sure to be extra cautious while doing this. Accidentally connecting power to the wrong pins could be disastrous. Double check all of your wiring before attempting to power up the unit. And, if you've done everything right, we should get the opening title for your game. Now you can spend some time playing with the system, and maybe even showing it off to some friends and family. If you've gotten this far and it's working, then congratulations. If not, unplug the power and go over all the connections one at a time. With any luck, it's just a missing or mistaken connection, and you'll be up and running in no time. Well, that's it for this week's part of the tutorial. Next week, we'll be jumping into building one of these on a circuit board. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below, and until next time, stay creative.